the gospel of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. <clears throat> so if you're a, a parent or a grandparent, you know some of these very basic things you had to do as a young parent. With your children, you had to be sure that they had food and clothing and shelter, right? Basic sorts of things. But you also know that there were other tasks that you had to do. Uh, I remember teaching my little kids uh, how to count, right? Starting with their fingers, then with their toes, then with their toys, right? Or you had to uh, teach them the, the colors. You start with the rainbow and kind of go from there. Or you teach them words, right? Uh, usually starting with animals. This is a cow, this is a horse, right? So they know the difference. When my oldest, who turned 49 this month, was two or three, his favorite uh, toy was a little yellow Tonka truck that he could run down the sidewalk and back faster than a sports car. But for him, it wasn't a truck, it was a cruck. And I tried and tried to get him to say truck, truck. And finally, what he was able to do was to say, Tur cruck. <laughs> and that lasted for a long time. When I bought a pickup, I thought that's what my license plate was going to read. Tur cruck, right? Uh, well, we try to teach our kids and we do it in the, the best, often the most simple kind of way, right? It's like a, a first grade lesson in language. So... I'm going to use Tom's magic board. I don't know if it has the same magic, but. So a first grade lesson in language usually goes like this. The teacher will show the students how to do it. My generation, it was on a chalkboard. These days, it's on a whiteboard, right? So first, there's a subject. Let's say Kim, right? We'll keep it personal. And then a verb, some kind of action thing, hunts. And then an object. What do you think that might be? Pheasants. pheasants. Yeah, there we go. I'm from the Midwest. Kim hunts pheasants. Simple, clear, concise. And just so you know, he also eats them, okay? If that makes it better. better. So simple, clear sentences is how we communicate how we help one another understand. And I think this morning, this simple uh, system works really well from the Ezekiel lesson, first of all, right? Who's the subject of all the sentences in Ezekiel? And if you don't know, you can look back. It's in your bulletin. Who's the subject? G-O-D. God is the subject, right? And what, what's the actions that God takes? I'll give you the list. God says, I myself will do this. I will search, I will seek, I will rescue, I will bring, I will gather, I will feed, I will rest, I will heal, I will strengthen, I will save. God does all that. Who's the object? All God's people, right? Yeah, talking about sheep, but, but that's us, right? In biblical imagery, it seems that the people, the sheep of God's hand, need a good shepherd to protect them and to care for them. God is going to do all those things for God's people, right? That's the kicker of this story, I think. God says, I myself will be their shepherd. I will. I will do it. I will get it done right. Me. Myself. Those who are lost and scattered will be sought out and rescued and brought home. Those who are hungry will be fed. Those who are injured will be healed. Those who are weak and oppressed will be given strength. What needs doing, God says, that's what I will do. I will. Why God? Why not leaders, pastors, mayors, governors, presidents, kings? 
Why is God saying, I will do that? Well, it's because all these other shepherds that God has raised up, those with wealth and power and voice and resources, simply put, have screwed things up royally for generations, right? The lesson says the leaders have taken all the good stuff and spoiled all the rest. That they deny access to the basic needs of others while they feast themselves. They trample and they scatter and they brutalize. Well, you get the picture. Ezekiel was clear of what the trouble it is. Then it says God will do one more thing besides all those nine or ten other action verbs. God will do what? Start with J. Judge. It says God will judge. You might say God judges whom? All of us, right? Yeah, yeah. You're as smart as the kids. <laughs> Last Sunday when uh, Pastor Tom talked about accountability to our faith, there's the line, God judges us all. Why, why does God do that? Because all the stuff that they, in the lesson, do to God's people is what we do by what we actually do and fail to do as God's people. We are among the they. That's what the lesson says. Remember that old saint, I think it was Pogo, who said, we have seen the enemy. <laughs> and it is. Yeah, yeah. I think the Old Testament lesson from Ezekiel is just simply a basic first grade lesson in theology. It's as basic as a first grade lesson in justice, peace, and equity, Passion and love and God's will for us, right? Here's how one Bible scholar put it. We are rather like the fat sheep in Ezekiel's pathetic picture. We push and thrust at the weak until they are scattered all over. We, the wealthy 6% of the world, gather around the well of Earth's resources and we drink deeply while the vast majority of people are pushed aside and have to lap up the trickles that spill from our overfilled cups. Oh, it seems trickle-down economics has had a bad reputation all the way back to Ezekiel. It doesn't work, right? Simply put, if we're the subject, we fail our neighbors in need. So what is God going to do about that? Well, the lesson says that God is going to feed and clothe us with justice, with justice. That God is going to invite us to stop pushing and stop butting against the weak. That God is going to hold us and the whole world accountable for those simple, basic things from the children's lesson even. But you might want to say, well, yeah, but, but that's the God of the Old Testament. <laughs> that's Ezekiel. Did you listen to the Matthew lesson, right? Matthew's lesson is the Jesus version of Ezekiel's lesson. God said there, there would be another servant. It's David back then. Now it's Jesus who will be the shepherd in the flesh to care for us and for all people. And that shepherd in the Matthew lesson makes it clear that goatish behavior, that those who shove and push and trample, those who leave the hungry empty, who fail to clothe the naked or visit the sick or those in prison, they will be fed and clothed with justice at last, right? Again, I think that's a basic first grade level lesson in God's compassion for all that God has made, especially for those who have been pushed aside or pushed down or trampled over. You see, before it's anything else, the Bible is always good for the poor, 
for those whom Jesus has stood alongside with healing and hope and mercy in his care, right? But it's also good news for us, whether we realize it or not, because now, now, especially lessons, we know what God's intent is for us. And that calling of us is to repent, to turn around, now, not later, in doing the justice we mostly just talk about. Uh, pastors do that in sermons, leaders do that in forums, and we all do that in text study, right? Another Bible scholar put it like this, giving food to the hungry or clothing to the naked is not a charitable handout or, but an exercise in simple justice, restoring to the poor what is rightfully theirs, what has been taken from them unjustly. So Jesus' vision, this scholar says, is not a plea for tax-deductible donations, <laughs> but a fervent cry for justice, for setting right what has gone wrong for so long, right? Now, at the end of the year, we're at the end of the church year, this is Reign of Christ Sunday. Jesus' life and ministry, the true Good Shepherd, I think, is the surest possible witness we could ever have that love for God and love for neighbor are simply inseparable. As I once said, they are two sides of the same coin. So our hope lies here. If God is the subject, the verb in these lessons is God judges, or you might say God hunts sinners, so that if Jesus is the subject, we know Jesus saves us all. What's our cry on reign of Christ Sunday? I think something like this. Long may Jesus reign with healing and mercy in his wings and in his heart for both his sheep and his goats. That's us, one and all, right? The subject, God saves the world. Amen. Amen. The peace of God. The peace of God, the justice of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen.